Okay, so we have talked about uh, nucleation growth type of kinetics. And previously, we are assuming so called a constant nucleation rate, which means per unit time, per unit volume, a fixed number of new nuclei are formed. Now, let's look at a different scenario, which we call, read to yourself, instant nucleation case, or so called a site saturation site saturation which means at the very beginning of the transformation all possible nuclei are formed or put it another way all the possible sites for nucleation are already saturated with nucleids okay so let's look at uh, the kinetics under such a assumption of so-called constant nucleation or site saturation still for nucleation growth model. That's what we said. If all nucleation happens at the very beginning and afterward, after time t is not zero, that's only growth. Okay? If that is the situation, then we would have something like this as what we illustrated. Again, the white portion is for untransformed volume and uh, the small nucleates in blue are individual nucleates. And because we talk about instant nucleation, which means at time zero, when T is zero, all the small nucleates appear or so-called site saturation every possible sites form a possible nuclei okay and after that there's no more nucleation and only growth afterwards which means each of these individual small nuclei getting larger and larger if that is the case then how do we describe the kinetics Simp for simplicity, let's do assume 3D three-dimensional growth, but uh, it's spherical growth, which means it's the nuclei starts as a small sphere and the sphere gets larger and larger. And in that case, the volume of a single precipitate, a single spherical precipitate under a constant growth rate. When we say constant growth rate, we mean the change of the precipitate radius with respect to time, dr over dt is a constant of v. Okay? With that assumption, spherical 3D growth, constant growth rate, and then the volume of a single spherical precipitate is given in this equation. V for volume, T means at time T is, this equation is clearly the volume for a sphere pi 4 over 3 pi r to the power of 3 and the radius r because we have assumed constant growth would be velocity, growth velocity times T assuming we start from zero size. Okay, start from radius of zero. So this equation gives us the volume for a precipitate, single precipitate, and then assume N0 is the initial nuclear density, okay, which means per unit volume at the very beginning, there's N0 number of nuclei. And it doesn't change afterwards because we said there's no more nucleation, only grows afterwards. N0 is the initial nucleation, which is the final um, precipitate density. Then the so-called extended fractional of conversion. Again, when we say extended, we mean both real and phantom. And when we say phantom, that includes the case when two neighboring precipitate starts to overlap. Okay, the extended fraction of conversion per unit volume would be the volume F extent is volume for a single precipitate times how many precipitate divided by the total volume, which is unit volume. And then let's plug the equation in 4 over 3 pi Vt to the power of 3. That is gives us the, the volume T term times N0. And for this entire thing, we can simplify, replace the constant term with k prime and put the t to the power of 3 at the end. 
So what essentially it tells us is the extended fraction of conversion would be a constant we call chi prime times t to the power of three. Okay, so that is what we have. Then remember this is extended which include both real and the phantom phantom is the situation when two neighboring precipitates starts to overlap and mathematically we did the double counting the real fraction of conversion is the case that you when the two neighboring precipitate touch each other they cannot two neighboring touch each other they cannot grow any further that would stop so the real fraction of conversion f would be one minus e to the power of minus f extent okay this is we borrow the similar concept as before and from this one f is the real fraction of conversion f e x t is the extended fraction of conversion which um include which include the double counting due to overlapping then we put the f extended into this equation we would have the real fraction of conversion is one minus exponential minus k prime times t to the power of three which is from here okay so from this we would get the real fraction of conversion on the instant nucleation of side saturation case still for a nucleation growth model except in this case all the nuclei formed at the very very beginning when t is zero and then after that that's only growth this is what we have okay and of course from this equation we can rewrite it okay we move the f to the right side and move the exponential term to the left side and then take natural log and move the negative sign in front of this minus k prime this is what we have f f real fraction of conversion versus time t and sometimes we would take the power one third power for the left side and then we would have the kt term so this is the typical kinetic behavior that relates the constant times t with the fraction of conversion okay this is for nucleation growth model but except now it's three still three dimensional growth but all the nucleation happened at the very very beginning okay after also called a side saturation after that it's only growth and the model captures this